Today we're going to talk about the female reproductive system. It will be composed of three parts. The first part has to do with the ovary and the hormonal orchestration of the reproductive process. Part two has to do with the uterine tube, uh, how things are different during the menstrual cycle and pregnancy. And part three, we will continue with the cervix and vagina, and then we'll pick up the placenta uh, and end with the mammary glands. Female reproductive system, part two, uterine tube and uterus. On part two, we want to describe the three layers of the uter uterine tube and compare these structures to different regions along its length. And we want to describe the different layers of the uterus and understand morphologic changes occur uh, throughout the menstrual cycle and uh, during early pregnancy. Now the uterine tube or the oviduct uh, goes stretches from the ovary. Here we see the ovary. Uh, all the way to the uterus, uh, and it, uh, it has a fimbria, which covers over the ovary and collects the egg, ampulla, and then the isthmus as it approaches uh, and becomes more similar to the uterus. So it's more like finger-like projections in the beginning, uh, and uh, they're contained within a wall, and then it looks more like the uterus as you come along. So the different layers are the infidibulum, which is the fembrier fingers that project over the surface, the ampulla, uh, and the isthmus. Uh, and so we can see the ovary, the, um, the uh, infidibulum, uh, the um, ampulla, uh, and the isthmus uh, tube as you go to the uterus. The uterus itself has three different layers. You have the endometrium, which is the uh, glandular portion in through here, myometrium, which is muscle, and the perimetrium is the connective tissue uh, uh, capsule around the entire process. Uh, later on, we'll talk about the cervix and the vagina, but right now we're talking about the, uh, the from the ovary, you have the infidibulum, uh, you have the ampulla and the isthmus and the uterus. Uh, that we're going to see. Uh, here we have the fallopian tube and the uterine tube is uh, synonymous. Uh, here we see the fimbria uh, projections, little finger-like projections that cover over the uterus and call, uh, it uh, catches the egg and it uh, coats the egg and the cilia are actually moving so it moves uh, the uh, cilia that's on these cells and we'll see it in a minute uh, beat uh, to set up a flow to bring the egg in, inside inside there. So here we see the fimbria uh, of the infidibulum uh, uh, projections in through there, and uh, they're kind of coats in the egg uh, in. Uh, and you can see uh, large lymphatics that run through there, which gives uh, helps to make it uh, these projections more uh, rigid uh, lymphatics running through here and here we can see that the cells are actually ciliated so these are ciliated cells all along the way that help to uh, capture the egg and bring the egg uh, into the uterine tube uh, from the uh, infidibulum uh, then we go into the uh, to the ampulla Ampulla is contained within the, a muscle layer. You've got a serosal on the outside, blood vessels in through there. But we have these projections that still have the ciliated cells uh, in, through, uh, in through there uh, as well. And then finally you get, as you approach uh, from the ampulla to the isthmus, as you approach the uterus, uh, you get the, uh, uh, the isthmus. Uh, and... Um, and so maybe the wall is a little thicker, becoming more similar to the to the uterus, uh, and these projections are getting smaller, uh, more muscle layer on the uh, the isthmus and the other uh, portions. We still have ciliated cells on the surface, um, blood vessels and lymphatics inside there. Here again, we can see the ciliated cells, uh, which will move uh, the secretions. Uh, along the way. There's also secretory cells in through there uh, as well. In the uterus, we see the uh, myometrium, the uh, endometrium, as well as a perimetrium, as we're seeing there. Uh, here we see the myometrium, 
uh, and the endometrium. Uh, uh, if you look at the uh, endometrium, you see there's a functional layer on top and then the basal layer. Basal layer touches the uh, myometrium and that's pretty much stable throughout the menstrual cycle. The functional layer is a layer that, that changes. So in terms of general structure, you have the perimetrium, which we don't have in view here, but we can see it right there. We don't see have it in view. We have the myometrium, which is a muscle, and then we have the endometrium. An endometrium has a basal layer, which we see there, and a functional layer uh, where we can see uh, on the surface. Uh, uh, from, the, from the basal layer all the way to the surface is where you get uh, the functional layer. So here we can see uh, the basal layer uh, is pretty much constant, uh, but the functional layer is the one that changes with the uh, menstrual cycle. So uh, uh, the basal layer pretty much stays the same during the cycle, as I mentioned. And here we see the basal layer and the functional layer and through there, spiraling arteries run up through here. We're sending off uh, little arterioles that provide capillaries uh, that uh, provide nutrients to the functional layer. Uh, it is the spiraling arteries that, that um, stop the flow that causes ischemia in the functional area that causes um, menstruation to occur. Here we see the spiraling arteries, multiple uh, coils of the same artery uh, as it goes from the uh, myometrium into the endometrial area. Uh, as I mentioned, the spiraling arteries cut back, cause ischemia. Uh, and there in the uh, menstrual phase of the cycle, uh, you have sloughing off of the functional layer. The basal layer pretty much stays the same. So you have a small functional layer and a basal layer after that point, and you are in the early proliferative phase. So you're recovering. Uh, the epithelium uh, uh, covers. Uh, 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 actually, there's even some ciliated cells in through there. Uh, but they cover the uh, endometrium uh, and then things start to grow. So the functional layer becomes to, uh, to expand. Early proliferative, uh, as we see again, we see the uh, simple columnar cells, ciliated cells uh, on the surface. Early proliferative again, this is the myometrium and, and the endometrium, and you can see that epithelium has completely uh, healed uh, the, the surface. Uh, again, we have the early proliferative phase. Uh, um, we can see some arteries in through there, the spiraling arteries, which are now uh, uh, feeding this area by uh, sending the, the nutrients up the arteries from the spiraling arteries. Uh, then we have a uh, late proliferative uh, in through here, which we have the glands pretty much developed and the functional layer is pretty much intact. The early secretory, uh, you see there's a space between the glands uh, and um, if the higher mag you can see the early proliferative, early secretory you have um, uh, secretions, these are glycogen uh, uh, secretions that are located um, at below the nucleus in early secretory, late secretory they'll be above the nucleus. So at the, they're at the base at that point in time and then uh, here you can see ciliated cells on the surface uh, of the uterus even. Again, uh, early secretory epithelium, the, uh, the, um, uh, the glands are getting uh, thicker with secretions uh, as you can see there. Uh, again, uh, go down to the, this is from the myometrium in through here, the muscle layer, the smooth muscle layer, uh, and the secretory uh, epithelium. Uh, this is luteal phase or secretion. Uh, the endometrium, as you can see, with lots of spaces uh, for, for the glands to secrete. We still have the spiraling arteries up through here, and they are providing the nutrients uh, for uh, this uh, large endometrium. A functional layer here, the basal layer uh, in through there. Myometrium, uh, and then the late secretory, big spaces with secretions uh, uh, occurring uh, therein. And uh, the phase of the, uh, the phase where the glands produce most glycogen is in the secretory phase. Uh, and so uh, the, the changes that occurs in the menstrual cycle uh, correspond to changes that are happening in the, in the pituitary, uh, which are, are acting on the ovary, 
with the FSH causing estrogen to be produced for the uh, proliferation to occur. And then uh, corpus luteum is producing progesterone for further development of secretions uh, of, the, uh, of the functional layer. If pregnancy does not occur, you have ischemia, uh, and then the spiraling arteries will, will cease uh, providing nutrients for the functional layer, uh, and the menstrual cycle will uh, be re repeated uh, in that system. Uh, if uh, pregnancy has occurred, uh, then you have implantation. Uh, in the, so the fetus actually invades uh, the mother, and you have the uh, vestigial reaction where uh, fibroblast-like cells uh, prevent uh, the continual invasion of the, of the fetus uh, in the mother. There's two types of cells here. Uh, you have the syncytial fibroblast uh, uh, cells uh, in through there. Uh, and uh, you have the tropoblastic cells and the cytotropoblastic cells uh, of, the, uh, of the fetus invading uh, inside. And ultimately, we'll get uh, the placenta to develop, as we'll talk about in part three, uh, and the fetus is in the lumen. Here's a 10-day implantation. Uh, we don't see the, the fetus in there. We can only see uh, the... Uh, the membranes of the fetus that are is actually uh, we can't see the undercell mass, but we can see the membranes that are attaching, uh, and is in the functional layer uh, of the uh, of the endometrium. And so, uh, uh, what we've talked about is you have the infundibulum with the fem with the fimbria, and then you have the ampulla and the isthmus. And this is where fertilization occurs, right in through here. Uh, and then finally, it goes into the uterus and is, it is implanted. And you have the vestigial reaction to prevent uh, any continued invasion. But uh, the spiraling arteries are providing nutrients for the developing fetus. A fetus. Uh, and so there was a host of articles, books, uh, that have uh, contributed uh, contribution to this uh, uh, presentation. And this is the end of the uterine tube, um, a uterus presentation part two. If this information was useful, please consider subscribing to the VMBS histology. Thank you.